God, Neil. This city is getting worse and worse. They're chalking a police horse outside. <laughs> so, uh, how's the job hunting going? Well, if I could speak, read, and write fluent Cantonese, I could get an entry-level job in the goose feather trade. <laughs> Coffee, but decaf. Could you bring the pot and pour it at the table? It's not that I don't trust you. It's just if I don't see the actual pot, I'll be jittery all day. <laughs> Neil, uh, your mother and I were talking, and we decided to send you to law school. Dad. So it'll be a little tight for a while, unless your grandpa Leo dies. Dad. And even then, no vacations. But that's OK. Since you're barely home anymore, your mother and I spend more than enough time together. Thank you. Yes, I see. I was just hoping that you'll do the actual pouring at the, uh, never mind. I'm fine. Dad, I really don't want to go to law school. Oh, thank God. N now I can buy the sauna. Neil, everything is going to be fine. I'm sure it will. Don't be so sure. The economy is terrible. You have no marketable skills, and you have this cockamamie idea that you're going to do something uh, artistic. I can't drink this. <laughs> this is not decaf. You see her over there? She's laughing because I'm drinking caffeine and she thinks I don't know. I know. <laughs> so you need a couple of dollars, a, a little cash, son? Um, well, actually, I could use some. See, this is right. A son needs help and a father is there for him. You, you're not going to make a habit of this, are you, Neil? <laughs> Thanks, Tom. OK, I'll see you. Some of us have a job. <laughs> oh, and uh, dear, I know all about the coffee. <laughs> Excuse me, could, could I buy your ketchup? Excuse me. Excuse me? Look, would it kill you to just pass me the ketchup? <laughs> You realize what you've just done? Well, I just was trying to spice up my eggs. You, ru <laughs> you ruined my shot. Oh, your shot? Oh, oh, this is a movie. It's a film, and you ruined the biggest and most pivotal moment in it. Oh, well, can't you just shoot it again? Oh, yeah, well, right. Like, I've got any more time before the owner of this place finds out that that extra over there with a the sucking chest wound is not the food critic for the New York Times. <laughs> so now I'm stuck with you in my film. All right, all right, all right, I'll just have to rewrite. Okay, so he's no longer an infected android, he's a Green Beret, and you, you, are his inexplicably Jewish son, and, uh, and you're also infected, and it's all because of Agent Orange. All right, good, good, good. I'll just figure out what to do with the mermaids later. Okay, you really sure you want me to be in your movie? I don't know, I don't have any acting experience. Hey, 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 don't worry about it. I love pulling a performance out on amateur. You know, I'm an actor's director. In the same class as uh, Scorsese, uh, Altman, Cassavetes. <laughs> Now grab something and help us load up the gremlin, will ya? Look, Megan, it's a time capsule. You have to overcome your emotional attachment to these things, because a hundred years from now, they could be major historical artifacts. But it's my diaphragm. <laughs> Anyone seen my passport? You're leaving the country? Thought Neil was taking you to that touring exhibit of clothes and accessories that rock stars died in. He was. He's late, and this is what I do when they're late. <laughs> Tell Neil I've gone to Holland in search of really tall blonde guys. <laughs> Damn it. I hate it when I like the guy I'm sleeping with. <laughs> Neil, you're late. <laughs> what happened, Neil? Eat pork? You'll never, never guess where I've been. Never, not in a million years. I would say the East River between 60th and 68th Street. What, I got it? <laughs> that wasn't much of a game. The most incredible thing happened to me. I was having my breakfast this morning when the guy next to me starts oozing green stuff all over the place. It turns out it's a film and I'm in it. Suddenly I spent the next 12 hours locked in mortal combat with the leader of the guava people, Todd Shankman, whose father also thought he'd never do anything creative. <laughs> Neil, that's great. What's the movie? It's called Revenge of the Ozone Mutant Mermaids. 
I know what it sounds like, but it's a film which spotlights the destruction of the ozone layer. And a tremendous number of bare-breasted women. <laughs> this film happens to have a moral social conscience. And a tremendous number of bare-breasted women. <laughs> Look, so what? The point is, Neil got to work on a film, which is what he really wanted. Were there a tremendous number of bare-breasted women? <laughs> Only enough to distract the androids so the guava people could make it to their home planet, which looks amazingly like a closed gay disco on 11th Avenue. Gee, Neil, this sounds a little cheesy. Is there a rap party? You don't understand. This is a, an incredible opportunity. I could learn everything about movie making. I mean, today, I didn't just act. I learned about lighting a scene and dressing a set and that if shot from the right angle, a group of Brazilians playing a game of pickup soccer can look just like a city in panic. <laughs> I'm really hoping that these guys at Scepter Films offer me a full-time job. Scepter Films? Oh, God, Neil, these are the sleaziest guys in the business. The guy across the alley with the telephoto lens has more integrity than they do. And he pays better. <laughs> and look at their films. I mean, do you really want to be making movies about three-headed mutants with multiple sex organs who will only stop their rampaging to mate with cheerleaders? Sure, if they'll let me. <laughs> Up until now, the only film I've been paid for is at my cousin Gail's wedding when my uncle Harvey gave me 20 bucks to keep the camera on the gifts to make sure nobody took anything. <laughs> I don't understand. A minute ago, you were all for my film career. But they'll exploit you. They'll overwork you. And who knows what they'll even pay you. And for what, Neil? So one day you can sit in a dark theater that reeks of Lysol and urine and say, don't open your eyes yet, Grandma. There are nipples on her back, too. I'm in love with her. Why can't you just accept her? Because she's not one of us. You've changed that. This is the Agent Orange talking. <laughs> And Todd! Todd, you're a guava person. Act like one. All right, listen up, everybody. This afternoon, we're going to be shooting the erupting volcano scene with the boiling wax. Now, this can be very dangerous. I want each and every one of you to take a moment and sign the release forms. <laughs> Neil, you were great in that scene. Dennis, get over here. I have an NYU film student here. He says he pitched you the idea of mutant mermaids a year ago. So what? I would have thought of it myself anyway, sooner or later. <laughs> Listen, you think you have a case? Call the town where we film Nukeberry RFD. If 2,000 people who lost their eyebrows didn't get a nickel, what chance do you have? <laughs> what are you looking at? Sorry, I just seemed familiar. I thought I had seen you somewhere. Maybe this will jog your memory. Whoa! Oh, you're Mona Savage! You were Spermarella! You were the evil Syphilina in Vermin Can Wait! You were the wrongly convicted school marm in Chain Gang by Choice! Neil, I see you've met my producer. And wife! He always forgets wife! Neil, the dentist across the hall has a rat caught in a trap and it's still alive. Put a Barbie doll in its mouth and shoot it from a distance. Does this mean you're hiring me? Absolutely. Congratulations. I like your drive. I love your passion. And the last guy we had here on work release made a run for it. <laughs> yeah, right. Mona, take care of the lunch guy, will you please? What are you waiting for? A tip? How's this for a tip? <laughs> oh, don't be so smug, Mona. Three years ago, you used to get the whole lunch for free. <laughs> Alicia, I know how you feel about me working here, but doesn't it matter to you that I'm happy? I'm making movies, and besides, this place isn't as sleazy as you made it out to be. Neil, which breast do you like? <laughs> Chicken. Uh, we ordered it in. <laughs> well, look, can we just talk about this when I get there? Oh. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Neil, we've got to put ten minutes of random boobs in Rainforest Slut. 
What's wrong with you? Oh, I don't know exactly. Well, the one thing I do know is that my girlfriend does not like me working here. <laughs> well, obviously, she can't handle us working together. Women are very, very threatened by me. Except I haven't told her about you. <laughs> oh. Well, when you do, she'll be very threatened. <laughs> you know where you can find some nice hunkers? The footage of The Bride of the Marshman. Oh, Bride of the Marshman. I saw that in high school with my best friend Gary. He got so excited, he dropped his asthma inhaler and was afraid to ask for it back from the large, sweaty man with the bedroll and sack of oranges. <laughs> oh, these girls were amazing. I dreamt about them. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Go back, go back. Okay. But why bother? Why not just use mine? <laughs> That girl tied to the rubber tree. What? You know her? That's my girlfriend. Nice. <laughs> uh, Gary, I'm not making this up. I'm with her right now. Yeah, I'm in her bedroom. Neil! <laughs> I'm sorry, he's my friend. You have to talk to him. I really don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave me, Marshman. Take me with you into the bog. <laughs> All I heard was some wheezing and a thump. Gary? Gary? He'll be all right. His mother checked his room every 15 minutes. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? You know, you could have just told me. Neil, it's not as simple as you think. <sighs> My girlfriend. Bride of the Marsh Man. Oh, would you please stop talking about it like it's something great? But I think it is. Doesn't that make you feel it all better about it? No. Look, I was going through a really bad time that summer. I hardly saw my father, and my mother was going through one of her phases where she made me introduce her to everybody as my best friend from boarding school. <laughs> so I took off for Mexico, and that's where I met Dennis. Oh. So, you and he... Hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, you dated your director, who's now my boss? That was six years ago. I mean, that... I can handle that. I mean, I can see how he could be kind of... charming and charismatic and, you know, kind of... Neil, I married him. <laughs> that sleazebag? <laughs> thinking it was totally impulsive it was the last day of shooting and we were filming the wedding that day anyway and he did look very cute in his seaweed <laughs> anyway so when he said let's do it for real i thought why not actually what i thought was this should really piss off my mother <laughs> that's why you got married if you want to piss off your mother why didn't you just start mumbling so she'd think she was going deaf <laughs> Neil, I was young. I made a mistake. Anyway, the next day when I woke up, Dennis was gone. No note, nothing. Just a burrow in a straw hat sleeping it off in the shower with a release form in his mouth. <laughs> of course, my mother had a lawyer who could annul anything, but he couldn't take away the humiliation. Oh, Neil, I just hate the idea of you working with him, of you seeing him every day. So what do you want me to do, quit? Well, after what I've been through... Oh. After what you've been through? What have you not been through? I mean, who don't you know? I'm sorry he hurt you so much, you know, but... I mean, since the day we met, I've been dodging your old boyfriend and now husband. Neil! I cannot believe it. I finally found something I really want to do, but I should know by now. I should check with you first. I think you're overreacting. Let's just look and see exactly what I can do here, okay? Oh, dental hygienist? Here, security guard. Oh, here's a good one. Potemkin tool and die looking for a clerk. Now, that must be safe, right? Right? Actually, I did a calendar for them once. <laughs> now, remember, you're making your final plea for world peace. Okay, Yale drama. Make me believe it. 
And action! Oh, no! And cut! Yes! So, tell me again how you almost got that Wendy Wasserstein play. Dennis, Dennis, look, um, sorry, I have to talk to you about my work in here. Thank God you're here, Neil. We've got a real problem with the next scene. What is it? We don't have one. <laughs> The Chinese restaurant downstairs won't let us use their giant walk, so there goes the spaceship landing. <laughs> We're gonna have to come up with another believable way to get the guava people back to their planet in time for their holy day. You want me to write a scene for the movie? Absolutely, Neil. That's the way we work around here. One day you're acting. The next day you're writing. Pretty soon, who knows, you might be making your own film. You really think there's a chance I'll direct someday? Hey, there's a chance you'll direct this afternoon if that paternity blood test comes out the wrong way. <laughs> so, is there anything else we need to talk about? Uh, yes, um, it's one thing. I, um, no, no. <laughs> Great. Now remember, Neil, you're writing the real pivotal scene in this movie, so give it your best shot. Take a full half hour if you need it and cover the phones, okay? <laughs> So you didn't quit? Well, I tried to, I really did, but he kept giving me more stuff to do and I kind of got distracted and I... Well, tell you the truth, Alicia, I don't really want to quit. Good, because I don't think you should quit. Neil, I don't want to be the reason you're not doing what you really want to do. Plus, I watched that film again you made in high school where you're attacked and killed by your couch, and I think you were lucky to get this job. <laughs> God, you're incredible. I mean, you just let go of the past, your pain, rage, and resentment, and just, you move on. No wonder my parents are scared of you. <laughs> Wait, where are you going? I have to kill Dennis. Wait, <laughs> uh, I need one where you've just seen the guava people for the first time, and you are absolutely terrified. Ah! <laughs> Hello, Dennis. Excuse me a second, I'm working here, okay? Dennis! Look, Dennis, I'm sure this is a very awkward moment for you, and you probably thought you'd never see me again, but I have to get this off my chest. No one has ever treated me the way you did, and damn it, you owe me an explanation. Okay, uh, I had a couple of drinks last night, and I made a lot of promises, and I think it's really small of you to expect me to keep them. <laughs> It's me, Alicia. You don't remember me, do you? He doesn't remember me. Look, my, my uncle, when it came time to write his will, forgot he had four children. But uh, he did remember about a farm girl that he had met in occupied France. <laughs> it happens. But not to me. John Updike once saw me in his rearview mirror and published an epic poem about it in The New Yorker. <laughs> Dennis. You don't remember me at all? Nothing? Take five, everybody. Well, <clears throat> since this is obviously very important to you, help me out here, refresh my memory. We were married. And? <laughs> Mexico, long, languorous moonlight swims in the Caribbean. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Basting each other with cocoa butter and sliding down that Mayan temple. Then somehow waking up on the room service cart in the suite of Hilda and Howard Grossman, who were celebrating yet another successful bypass? I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank here. This is ridiculous. Look, this is going nowhere. Why don't we just think about this for one minute? Do the guava people really have to go home? Hey, I don't have to take this. It's bad enough I spent a week tied to a rubber tree screaming, I'll never love you, Marshman. My heart belongs to Leech Boy. <laughs> Marshman, the bride of Marshman, which drove six million dollars worldwide? Alicia, oh my God. It's been so long, how the hell have you been? Did you ever resolve that thing you had going with your mother? Well, she could just love me unconditionally instead of being so con- But wait a minute! <laughs> Don't you remember and you don't remember that we were married? We were never married. What are you talking about? Don't you remember the wedding scene when you said, 
As long as we're shooting it, let's do it for real. Look, I told everybody it was a real wedding so we could get the chapel without paying a location fee. <laughs> Plus, I thought it'd be a great way to get a genuine performance out of you. Then I had to leave the very first thing the next morning because I heard there was a tidal wave that was wiping out an entire village. I got some fabulous footage. Neil, make a note. You just can't duplicate that in the tub. <laughs> then I went to New York and... Oops, I guess I owed you a phone call. A phone call? A phone call. Do you know what you are, Dennis? You're a cockroach. You're invulnerable. You go through life exploiting people, lying to people, using people, and you never have to pay for it, and that's what just really kills me about this. Dennis! Dennis! You spent $300 on a stunt driver! Come on, Mona. It was the trickiest and most dangerous stunt I've ever filmed. What was I supposed to do? The same thing we did last year. Strap your grandmother in a rental car and tell her the bars close in an hour. <laughs> Who's that? His real wife. Look, Mona, not in front of the guava people, okay? Okay, I'm fine. <laughs> Have fun working here. <laughs>